Shadow Verse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk a little bit about magic systems in fantasy. Now, if you're thinking, okay, wizards and stuff, Harry Potter, Gandalf, Lord of the Rings and everything, uh, actually, the, the idea, the concept, even just what is a magic system, applies far more broadly. Um, X-Men, okay? Each X-Men is an individual wizard who can cast one or two spells amongst them, essentially, okay? Uh, Star Wars, Force, they're called wizards even in Star Wars at times, okay? But a magic system is basically any type of supernatural ability, something that exists in the universe. And they're a lot of fun. They add a, a, an interesting, fantastical element to a story. They can be actual plot devices used to cause conflict for the heroes or used to resolve plot itself. They can actually be the mechanisms used to ask interesting philosophical questions through storytelling, okay? And so this is where the, the uh, criticism that uh, so many people try and use to dismiss arguments like, why are you taking X seriously when it's a, uh, like it's a property made for children with space wizards? That's generally what people use for, say, uh, trying to deflect and disregard criticisms against Star Wars. You shouldn't be taking it seriously when it, that's such a dumb, disingenuous argument because there are some very serious concepts in Star Wars, okay? Concepts about resisting corruption, resisting an inner evil that is growing, overcoming the lure of power, forgiveness. And what's interesting, so many of those concepts I just mentioned are intertwined around how the Force, the magical fantasy element, is employed in Star Wars, the dark side of the Force, overcoming inner, you know, inner temptation, inner evil and stuff like that, and becoming better than what you were, even in the face of temptation, anger, rage, and all that stuff. These are all really cool concepts that's wrapped around a fantasy thing. And then to say, because it's just fantasy, these aren't serious concepts, is dumb and disingenuous. No. In actual fact, we can explore certain concepts easier through fantasy than we can if we were to just try and make it a alternate history story or, or, or whatever, okay? Because the fantasy lets you uh, do certain things. I, I've done this with my own novel, Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror. So fantasy and magic enables you to ask really interesting kind of what if scenarios, even philosophical kind of ethical dilemmas that you wouldn't be able to do if you didn't employ these fantasy elements in the first place. And so far from making a fantasy property less valid to be taken seriously, it can actually enhance it. And so that argument is so blasted stupid, I can't stand it. So fantasy is awesome. It enables you to do really cool creative things. Now, there's a uh, potential, uh, I guess, danger with, fa with fantastic elements, stuff like that, because they don't have hard and fast set rules. In the real world, there are properties about the real world that we understand just through observation, like gravity, okay? And if you have someone in a non, like when I say non-fantasy, it'll still be fiction, but say uh, an alternate history or uh, whatever, just a historical retelling, if you have someone suddenly flying, okay, when there should have been no fantastic elements in this, especially if you're doing a uh, historical drama, you'd be like, what the heck? That's not how gravity works. Everyone knows how gravity works. And so we expect for everyone to operate according to those laws in that world. But when you introduce an element that doesn't have set rules, the author is making up the rules, it can cause very strong potential problems because it can be used disingenuously, unrealistically, well, unrealistically, yes, unrealistically, I'll get there. And also in Deus Ex Machina, because you could have just the magic come in and save the heroes and from all, all the problems and stuff like that. And so these are the potential uh, problems, dangers, okay, when you employ fantastical elements in stories. Now, there are generally two camps uh, or two ways magic is employed in stories. And this is the whole point of the video that I want to talk about, even with some of the tangents, but I think they were relevant tangents that I went to in the first place, but I had to get that off my chest. But now we're getting into the, the, the real core meat of this subject, are these two camps and how they're employed. Because I think the definition between these two camps, which is it's called hard magic and soft magic, can be very misunderstood. And I wanna help define them a little bit more so they can be employed a little bit better in literature. So a soft magic is generally defined as one that doesn't have rules. And that's the one that I wanna push back on. I say, no, that's a bad definition. I also think it's an incorrect definition. A soft magic system is actually more one that is less understood by the reader in what it is capable of 
doing, okay? A hard magic system is one in which has very strict rules, but I actually want to add two more important elements to these things to help define them and also would help them be employed in storytelling much more effectively. And it's in the limitations of what they can do. I feel a hard magic system has far more limitations than what it can do, and a soft magic system has less limitations, okay? It is capable of doing far more because it's just kind of magic, that the rules are less defined. And so some good examples of what I would say are on the side of soft magic systems would be, say, Harry Potter and even Wheel of Time. Let me, let me explain that a little bit more. You see, even with, say, the Wheel of Time magic system, and these aren't spoilers, I'm just kind of explaining well, in-world uh, world building elements of it, there's no strict limitation on what the magic can do except from the things we have seen it do and what the in-world characters have discovered that the magic can do it or not, or, or how the magic can achieve it. When a new spell is introduced in Harry Potter, at no point do you think, well, oh, they shouldn't be able to do that, the magic doesn't allow that in employment because it's a far more loose, dare I say, soft magic system. If the characters can do it, the magic can, it's then established that magic can do it. A more hard magic system that's more restrictive defines quite clearly the parameters in which it operates. And then if it did something outside of those parameters, you'd be like, it shouldn't be able to do that. That's not how the magic works. Let's take Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn as an example. Limited edition hardcover, very cool. And this isn't a spoiler, it's just an explanation of the world building makeup of the magic system in Mistborn. And uh, it's really interesting, unique. It has a fuel source. And so to do the magic, you need to ingest specific types of metal that fuel the magic. Now, that does open it up to certain possibilities. For instance, there might be undiscovered metals that could fuel other magical abilities because the specific metal fuels a specific magical ability, okay? Pewter, for instance, enhances one's physical characteristics. It's a hard set rule, and if you ingest pewter flakes and you're capable of burning it as either a misting or a full mistborn that can burn multiple metals, you then get that enhancement. That's the rule. So then suddenly, if if, some, if a Mistborn or Misting ingests pewter and uses it to enhance, say, the, a different probably like uh, Sight, which is what Tin should be able to do, Tin enhances the senses, you'd be like, that's against the rules. Unless there's an in-world explanation as a direct contradiction on how the magic is set to operate. Now, there are broader things in the whole Cosmere, which is the joint universe Brandon Sanderson writes most of his fantasy settings in, that allow for certain, I guess, extensions of magics and other ways it could be employed. But for the most part, very strict rules, all using and defined in it. And if a new spell suddenly came out of nowhere that a Mistborn could suddenly teleport without ingesting metals, they can just teleport, we know that there's not a part of allomantic magic. So they would have to be getting that ability from somewhere completely external to this specific magic system. And I think this is a much better definition between hard magic systems and soft magic systems. One that has restrictions in what it can do, very clearly defined, and one that actually doesn't. You could introduce any new spell. And so if we apply this to Wheel of Time, spells in the Wheel of Time are called weaves, okay? They, you weave certain elements together to create certain results. And if it's air or fire or whatever, and sometimes they can be mixed matched and everything. But what happens in the Wheel of Time quite regularly is new weaves are discovered, okay? New ways in which the true source can be channeled and used. And every time we discover something new that this magic can be used for, it makes perfect sense because we actually aren't given many limitations in what this magic magic is capable of achieving. There are limitations in the way that it operates in certain instances, okay? There are ways to incapacitate channelers. There are restrictions in how much power they can draw in and the level of strength of weaves. Like some, some weave spells are too strong for people who can only uh, use so much of the power to achieve. So there are like limitations that way, so it makes it a little bit more hard, but it's very soft in that it can basically do anything as long as it's presented in the book. And so if we were to just create a new, even if we went to an extreme, that there was a weave that could destroy the world, okay? It would take a crazy amount of one power. That could be possible because there's nothing in the magic system itself that restricts what it can do. And even if there are, they're more specific and more exceptional because uh, whenever something is introduced, a new, new weave is like, well, yeah, uh, the, uh, we, there's no real uh, limit to what this magic system is capable of achieving. All what needs to be done is the characters need to discover it, basically. I mean, one character even discovers one on the fly where weaves have an opposite and stuff like that. Now, 
It would be easy to say in the narrative that a certain weave is simply impossible because it just the power can't do it. But again, that would be a one specific case, okay? There's uh, nothing outside that then is precluding other ways that can be used unless it is stated. The actual structure of this magic system is very open-ended to create any kind of weave or spell that the author wants to put into it. In contrast to this, Mistborn is very different, okay? Allomancy has very strong restrictions and defined ways it's used. Hard versus soft. I think this is a much better definition. And the other thing that I want to kind of just define and talk about is the idea that soft magic systems get to contradict themselves. And I think that is a wholly a bad way of looking at it. Incorrect, okay? No matter how soft your magic system is, you are going to be educating the reader to how it operates just by the way it is used and employed. As soon as that magic does anything, you have established a rule, and the rule is this magic can do this. That's it. And so soft magic systems do have rules. And to say that they don't and that the author can break the rules willy-nilly, well, that can cause huge contradictions in the plot, massive plot holes, because, for instance, Gandalf in Lord of the Rings, he is shown to do certain interesting things with his magic, and then he never does it again. And because there's no explanation given as to the reasons why he doesn't do it, like if it was a one-off, he doesn't have the power, he can't do it in that instance, we are uh, left with no other conclusion that he still has the ability to do it, but is just not doing it. And that's a plot hole. That's a problem. In Lord of the Rings, we see Gandalf creating a protective barrier that protects him from a Balrog. He is able to heat up people's weapons so hot that they have to drop them. He deflects arrows out of the sky. He does a lot of interesting things, and he only seems to do it once, okay? So the magic is really inconsistent in Lord of the Rings, and people generally say that's because it's a soft magic system. No, okay? It's a soft magic system because we don't know what it is capable of doing. It can essentially do anything. There's no real limitations in what it can do, and, and uh, apart from what is presented to the audience. But as soon as we are presented that it can do something, it can do it. Gandalf could multiply himself into a hundred different Gandalfs in front of an enemy, okay? He's already kind of shown that he can teleport in the Hobbit movies. If he shoots a fireball, we never really actually see him shoot a fireball, not to my memory, but if he shoots a fireball, if he does any kind of magic that we kind of see in nearly any other fantasy, we would just say, well, yeah, he can do it because of magic, where there's not, not, no reason given that he wouldn't be able to do it in the magic system itself. And that is the defining thing of a soft magic system, in my opinion. But it still has rules, and you establish it very clearly when they do something with the magic, that the magic can do it. Now, there are other ways to make it far more kind of uh, mysterious and stuff, in that the characters don't know how they did it, if it was a very spontaneous, random thing. It's still established that the magic is capable of doing it, but it just kind of manifests randomly and these random kind of things. That's not established how magic works in Lord of the Rings, but say uh, in uh, certain more fairy tale properties where magic is a very mysterious, chaotic entity where uh, only really powerful people can seem to control it and other people uh, it manifests randomly and even someone who's cursed with magic can't control it and other things like that and just doing random things. You can have them use magic and not be able to use it again because they simply don't know how to do it but it doesn't mean the magic can't do it. And that's an important distinction. And it is an unspoken rule that is inherently established when you portray the magic doing it, okay? And if you don't want the characters or the enemies or the magic system to do it again, you need to explain why. Why could it do it in this instance and it's not being done later on? Because when Gandalf was fighting the Lich King in, you know, Return of the King, any number of things that he had done in previous Lord of the Rings movies with the magic would have been really useful. A protective barrier that he could make would have been really useful, but he doesn't do it. And uh, it's because the uh, Lich King has, you know, magic as well. We're not explained. The Lich King seems to just be hitting him, except he makes Gandalf's staff explain. Like, it's very unexplained what's going on. And if you don't explain something like this, okay, that's a weakness in the writing, to leave things out. They might be able to be explained that the Lich King was simply nullifying Gandalf's magic with his own magic. He protects a barrier or something like that, but that's me making it up on the fly out of the movies. And viewers shouldn't have to do that because the other big danger of leaving it to the viewers to do it is that generally it's completely contradicted in later movies because the writers actually, they're not aware of it or they're just ignorant of these things and they accidentally put in massive plot holes. And I did this with Star Wars. I have a video where I look at plot holes in Star Wars and I had just a made up excuse as to why lightsabers didn't have 
have cross guards, okay, and it's that um, the energy flow couldn't be split, okay, or there was so much energy that the crystal could produce that only enabled them to get away with one kind of beam and everything. Because cross guards would be really useful, but they're absent in Star Wars. But then in later movies, they had a cross guard, which throws all my theories out the window. But if it was an established rule that explained this in canon by the actual writers, that was explained by a character, well, then it establishes much more harder. And then still might be contradicted because sometimes writers are completely oblivious to canon. Um, but it's far less likely that stuff like that happens, okay? Because the other big danger about uh, magic systems, and soft magic systems are far more uh, leaning towards this danger, is deus ex machina. That you can use the magic to solve the problem because just magic. And this is where Brandon Sanderson's rules for magic systems that are really good. One of his first rules is your ability to resolve plot in a satisfactorily manner with magic is directly proportional to how well the audience understands that magic system. And that is absolutely true and it, and it applies not just to magic, it applies to anything, okay? It applies to technology and sci-fi settings, it applies to character um, uh, skills and stuff like that, okay? If a character is at the, you know, the final battle and they pull out a skill out of nowhere and the, that suddenly saves them, like what? That's a form of deus ex machina. But if you previously established a character has that skill, okay, you then inform the audience and they're aware of it, they understand that mechanic, and therefore when that mechanic is used later on, well, it's answered. A great example of, uh, say, technology that is shown how it is used in the, in the world, and then they're very consistent to the lengths and limitations of its utility, is the grappling thing that the Mandalorian has in the TV series Mandalorian. It's so straightforward of how this grappling thing works. No one needs to explain it. You figure it out just by watching it, and then he uses it multiple things, sometimes in different ways than what you might expect, even in combat, that's like, yes, that's awesome, that's cool. And it's uh, applying the exact principle that Brendan Sanderson's you know, rule of magic is applying because we understand how it works, okay? And because we understand how it works, therefore when it's used to resolve conflict, it is far more satisfying. And because soft magic systems generally don't have defined rules, and if you go according to my specific definition that it doesn't really have limitations in what it can do apart from what it shows the characters doing, it can be very dangerous because say, you know, Harry Potter or Wheel of Time, that a hero is in a situation where they uh, need a spell that's never been used before and they just pull out a new spell out of the air because their magic system technically allows it, it comes across as a bit of deus ex machina. There is a specific situation where a character does this in the Wheel of Time. I'm not going to explain what it is because it's spoilers and it happens in the very last book, but she actually figures out the weave in a logical way because it's pre-established how weaves work, okay? And so it kind of makes sense and that's more allowed and it doesn't come off as deus ex machina as it would have if she just whips out a new spell out of nowhere that helps save her or do something and, uh, and then it's resolved. Because in soft magic systems, again, they can do anything so therefore you could whip out spells to resolve any problem. That's the danger in them. But the thing that people don't realize, I'm gonna really try and hammer home this point, is that soft magic systems do have rules. And uh, and you establish them by the way it's shown. As soon as you show a spell doing something, you're saying the magic can do it. So the idea that soft magic systems don't have rules is incorrect, in my opinion. They absolutely do have rules, they just have less limitations in what the, the writer, the storyteller, can depict it doing. And, can, and that's with Harry Potter. You, like, what spell couldn't be done in Harry Potter with that magic. Uh, magic is kind of limitless in that sense. Apart, the only limitation is if the character knows how to do it or not. It's certainly possible in the magic. They, they just have an instant kill spell in Harry Potter because reasons. In fact, <laughs> in the Wheel of Time, this isn't really spoilers, but as to who, I'm not gonna say who figures out, but there technically is an instant kill spell in Wheel of Time that, that just it pops up eventually as well. And so again, that's why Wheel of Time magic is actually a bit more closely related to Harry Potter magic and is, a, is a, a, a good example of what I call a soft magic system. So what do you think about uh, uh, the definitions that I have been putting forward in, uh, in this video? I do look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, I hope to see you again. So until that time, there we go.